Hey guys, welcome to this Football Manager 2020 Tactics Guide. Today we're going to look at how you create your own system. We've got two approaches we could take. You could either create around a philosophy or an idea of the football you want to play, or you could try and create a system around your players. What we're going to try and do is combine both methods into one. Before we jump into the guide itself, please do subscribe and click the bell button. That way you get notified of all new guides as they go live. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. It would really help the channel. So guys, the screen that we should begin with is your team report and squad depth. Looking at all positions, you can get a good gauge here of what players you have for what positions. There's no point in trying to put square pegs in round holes you won't get anywhere as you can see we've got good options up front very good options at amc so maybe a 4231 would work well and equally at mr and ml so we could go with a 442 because we've got a lot of mcs i actually want to go with a 4231 for the reason that i have a vision of the sort of football i want to play which is stretching the pitch and playing pressing possession based football so let's begin it's really difficult creating a tactic you've got so many different things to think about the best thing you can do is just get up a default system to begin with so you can kind of get your thoughts together and work out what you think you want to do with the system i'll go with vertical tiki taka it's the nearest i'll get to stretching the pitch in both directions maybe a bit too narrow but we can sort that out in a second through the instructions and the rules the formation I haven't got available on there, so I'll go with the drop down menu, pick out the 4231 because that suits my team best and the vision I've got for what I'd like the system to look like. And then this is the default we've got. So, my idea for this tactic is the back four needs to be quite stable, but the wing backs need to get forward. Now, we haven't got a DMC here, and this is the biggest weakness in the 4-2-3-1, so I need to cover that somehow. What I'm going to try and do is have both wingers in roles that will not overcommit them going forward. But I'm going to try and use the full backs to sit in a little bit so that they almost act as wide defensive midfielders when we are defending. There's a number of ways we can do that, which I'll show you in just a second. But going on to the front line, I want my attacking midfielder to charge forward and support the advanced forward, creating a bit of an overload in the final third, while the wingers stretch the pitch out wide, creating loads and loads of space. The idea is to create loads of vertical space, loads of wide space, so that the opposition is stretched to the limit, and that creates gaps for you to be able to create chances. I want to go with an attacking mentality, I know that, so we may as well set that straight away. I also know that I want to go with a slightly short passing style, and I'd like to go slightly higher on the tempo. I want to get the ball moving around. In terms of the width, I would like to go with a fairly wide width, because we want to stretch that pitch, remember, but I'm not going to go too wide. And I want to hit low crosses. I always find that higher crosses tend to get cleared out. Low crosses can create problems. I want my team to run at the defence because I want them to create some form of an overload. But I don't think I want to be too expressive because that can create losing the ball. We're going to pass into space. I've always liked that um, as an instruction. Get rid of go through the middle. I don't want to do that. What I would like to do is create an overlap on the left and an overlap on the right. I want to use a counter press and a counter style. We've already said that. When we lose possession, I want to hit them straight away, get the ball back and counter. And uh, I think we will distribute to full backs, not to the centre backs. And I'll also take uh, throw it long. That should do it for the in transition. It's generally quite easy to sort those instructions. Out of possession, I want to have a really high line of engagement, a really high defensive line, pushing up the pitch as high as we possibly can to stretch play. I want to be very narrow in our defensive shape. I want to use the offside trap because we have got that high line. So chances are there's going to be a lot of balls coming in behind over the top. Get stuck in. Because as soon as we lose possession, we need to get it back as quick as possible. Extremely urgent in terms of our pressing intensity. Again, that means they're going to harass the team straight away. Use tight marking. And these are pretty much my go-to settings all the time. So that's pretty much where the instructions will be for this system. We then need to look at the roles. The first thing I tend to do here 
is pick my best 11. And there you have my starting 11. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the rolls, guys, when you're picking them, just think of the bigger picture. Think of what you're trying to do with the system. So I'm trying to press the opposition, retain possession, and we're also stretching the pitch both vertically and horizontally. So my rolls need to match that philosophy. Also, they need to interact well with one another. If you've got one roll that ends up bouncing off another, it's going to be a nightmare. And then the final thing is every roll needs to be square pegs in square holes. If you try and fit a round peg in a square hole, it ain't going to work. So you need them to match the players. <clears throat> We're going to start with an advanced forward because that stretches the pitch vertically and he also works the channels, which will give other players the opportunity to get in behind. I'm going to use wingers because they will stretch the pitch horizontally and I'm going to keep them on support purely because we want them marking the full backs. I'm going to change the attacking midfielder to shadow striker because I want him harassing the defence when um, we are out of possession and also making those late runs in behind. The central midfielders aren't going to work as they are there. I think we're going to have a box to box midfielder and a deep lying playmaker. The reason for that, the box to box midfielder will shuttle from the striker's position all the way back to the defence. So he'll do a dual job there and he'll also create an overload on the attack. The deep line playmaker, I always like to have one playmaker within the team that can be there just to pick out the passes or to create chances. He's going to be on support duty purely because we can't overcommit in the middle of the park. Now, because we've got that box to box midfielder, we could do with the wing back actually thinking a little bit about that slot there. So we're going to go with inverted wing backs because they will sit narrower naturally, which works really well with this system. Uh, inverted wing back, there we go. And the central defenders are going to be ball playing defenders. That's because I don't want them giving away possession. I want to be able to hold on to it. And you may be thinking, well, surely they're going to give away possession because they're going to try riskier passes. I haven't found that to be the case. I've actually found with central defenders and no nonsense centre-backs, they just hoof the ball forward, whereas at least the ball playing defender tries to play out from the back. And finally, the goalkeeper needs to be a sweeper keeper just because we've got such a high line. Now, just to explain the inverted wing back, because this is a very misunderstood role. A lot of people purely see it as an attacking role, as in they're inverted, so they cut inside. That's just what they do. I personally see it more as they're inverted in a defensive manner, so they actually sit narrower. What this means is both inverted wing backs will sit alongside my central midfielders, almost creating a midfield four in a way but they'll be a little bit deeper and if the wingers get back as they're meant to then we should have plenty of cover down the wings which then leaves the shadow striker and the advanced forward to do all of the donkey work up top now that you understand my reasoning for picking these roles let's have a quick look at the player instructions in the finished system I would only select player instructions if you're trying to mould a role into something slightly different from its default. A prime example of this is the inverted wing back. I only use this role because I like the fact that when we are in possession but the inverted wing back doesn't have the ball, he sits and supports those central midfielders giving them the licence to go and attack. However, I do want him to do the more traditional job of a wing back when he's got the ball. So I tell him to take more risks, dribble more and get further forward. We also tell him to shoot less often because wing backs tend to be pretty crap at taking shots. And I have a standardised thing of doing tackle harder and mark tighter with every single player on the pitch. I just find they defend much better when we do that. It's the same for the advanced forward, it's the same for everyone throughout the pitch. The wingers were telling them to get further forward. That's to try and combat the fact that I've got them on support duty, which is to get them tracking those fullbacks without having to tell them to man mark, which very often completely takes away from the attacking part of their game. By telling them to get further forward, I'm hoping that they're going to keep dribbling with the ball, which is what we've asked them to do in the team instructions. There's no real settings for the shadow striker, but the box to box midfielder, same as with the wingers, I want him to get into the box, so I'm telling him to get further forward. The deep line playmaker, we've now set him to pass the ball shorter. This is only for the reason that I've made a slight adjustment to the original tactic that you saw me making to begin with, and we're gonna go slightly more direct rather than shorter. 
The reason I want to do that is because Fonseca is very fast in behind and I feel like those quick balls could actually play a part and we should still be able to hold on to possession. The ball playing defenders are set to close down less. This is because the ball over the top is a real problem this year in FM20 and that should hopefully stop them stepping out from their position and then getting caught out. A hugely underestimated part of the game is set pieces. These can make or break any tactic and I am terrible at them, I'll be honest with you. So I tend to download both corners, attacking and throwings. You can get quite a lot of goals from both. I use Naps one from his Beowulf 442 purely because I use that system generally and it works quite well. Corners are set to hit the near post and we have both defenders attacking the near post as well as a striker attacking the far post and the MC marking the goalkeeper with an AML going forward. We've got someone on the edge of the area, another one lurking and then three as a minimum staying back. One of them can be a kick taker so you can just have two staying back but any less than that and you're going to have big big problems if you get countered. On the throwing side of things, again attacking, going with the long throw, I found this is really really good, I'd highly highly recommend it and trying to set up like this as well will work well. You need three players staying back like you can see here but I've got the AML lurking at the near post, the far post is the STC and then we've got someone man marking the goalkeeper and someone attacking the near post as well as the AMC going forward. You can see all of that there yourselves anyway. This is the one I generally use. And as you're about to see in the game itself, this can be really effective. Okay, guys, we're now going to quickly watch a game against Wrexham at home. Wrexham use a 442, so it's a really good sample test to use because that system is way overpowered this year in Football Manager. And it's a tough one to come up against even at home and despite us being favourites for the match. I would always recommend watching new games on comprehensive highlights just to begin with. For today, I'm only going to set it to extended just because I don't really have time to be honest to record and then edit that much um, video. But that is what I'd recommend doing maybe the first one or two games just so you can get a feel for how the tactics working and how the roles are interacting. So as we can see here early on, Vrakas, the right winger, is stretching the pitch horizontally and the striker Fonseca was doing really well stretching the pitch vertically there so we're definitely getting the space that we want and we're getting a few gaps as well appearing in the opposition's back line which is good to see. Fonseca's in behind and he exploits it. What a start, 42 seconds in and we are 1-0 up. If we watch that replay, so gear with the ball to Fonseca and pass to Samba who threads the ball through to Fonseca. You can see there our shadow striker as well is creating havoc, which means that there's only one defender picking up Fonseca, who is an absolute danger going forward. Good start, and we now got a long throw. It's played out to Olzer, the deep line playmaker. Gale to Ryan, to Vrakas, who scores 2-0. This may be a little bit of a fake um, impression we're getting of the tactic. I can't imagine it's this good to be honest and at some point it would probably start waning a little bit. I can't see us constantly scoring beautiful goals like this but it's nice to know that it is capable of doing it. The other thing you should bear in mind is the squad's familiarity with the tactic is really bad because I've not loaded this in pre-season at all. I've literally just created it mid-season and chucked the lads into it. Barazetta, the right back, picks up the loose ball Works it inside to the centre-back. Good pass to Fonseca. That's where that slightly more direct style of play is coming in. First chance for Wrexham, a corner. Uh, free kick, sorry. And we've picked up the loose ball. This is where the counter is working. You see, look at all these bodies charging forward. This is our advance forward. So he's instructed to work the channels. That's what he's doing with the ball right now. We then have Ryan. That's our shadow striker. We've got Olzer, our deep line playmaker, and Barazetta, who is our inverted wing back, is getting forward, along with Vrakas. Remember, we've told these two to get further forward. We've also told Samba to get further forward, and we've told Gale to get further forward, the box to box midfielder, and Warburton, who is the inverted left winger. You'll see a picture now of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get bodies involved in the attacking phase of play. And what's going to come of it? Nothing. Or is there? Barazetta to Ryan to Fonseca. And that's been allowed. 3-0. This game's quite easy, isn't it? 
Really well worked goal there. There's a little bit too much fiddling about, possibly too many plays in the box, if anything, but we got there in the end. Now, this is lower leagues, of course, and this is probably a little bit too risky if you're playing against a better team, this system, in which case you might possibly think about moving Ryan, the AMC, back to DMC. So you've got a bit more st defensive stability there. I'd probably use him as a defensive midfielder in that role, maybe even on a support duty. There's Wrexham in behind and they almost break it. Out to Tharn. Grant. Smith scores. There you go, 3-1. That's where that higher line is definitely not working. We meant to play in the offside trap there, but we've done a terrible job of it. They all tried to step up and, well, you saw what happened. I don't know where our defence has gone. We just had a set piece. Everyone was forward and now they've broken. But it's a good save from the goalkeeper. Not liking the fact they've had a couple of clear-cut chances already in the first half. But like I did say, we're up against a system that is way overpowered this year. Last chance of the half. Barrazetta with a long throw. To Fonseca, to Gale and oof, off the bar. Great play there. That's where the long throw comes in, guys. So I would recommend having a look at that. Works very, very well. Right, well, tilt lads, I appreciate that because that was a good performance. 3-1 up. You can't really complain at that. We do just need to avoid against complacency, though. That's the only concern here. Now, when you get to this sort of part of the game and you're maybe worrying about losing a lead, which I'm just going to stick with the tactic so we can see how it performs, what I'd usually do is probably switch to cautious mentality and I'd maybe tell the lads to hold their shape. In fact, I'll show you. I'll show you what I'd usually do. So you go into tactics... I would go to a cautious mentality there and I click on here and I'd sorry I click on here and I say hold shape and regroup what that does is tell the lads just to sit back not to charge forward and not to press the opposition which is what we're trying to do with this system it just gives you that little bit more breathing space and probably gives them chance to come onto you more so you can counter Barazetta to all there works the ball to Gale the box to box midfielder Barazetta, sitting nice and narrow there. You see where these inverted wing backs are? That's Barazetta, my right wing back. That's Warburton, my left wing back. Inverted wing backs always sitting narrow. They almost create that overload in the centre of midfield. There's also there, my deep line playmaker. So when he picks up the ball, he's going to try and find those long passes. And you can see Vrakas and Samba stretching the pitch along with Fonseca, almost creating a front three. And there's the shadow striker, Ryan. There's so many players overloaded here. There's two banks of three that Ryan's got loads of space to work in if he can pick up the ball. Let's see how this unfolds. Vrakas. And it ends up in a tackle. I <laughs> picked the wrong highlight to analyse there, didn't I? Ball's back to Jam in the centre-back with a lovely little pass over the top. Fonseca's in behind. Good save by Howard. Well, we've had 18 shots, 11 on target, and 5 half chances, so not too bad so far. Warburton, Gale, moving the ball around nicely, just trying to work on opening. And that is a stunning strike from Vrakas, 4-1 Scarborough. This is why we use the work ball into box setting, because this is what the lads do. They just try and work it around the edge of the area, don't rush it, and wait for the opportunity. And Vrakas has the technique to do that. Let's see how we're working the ball out from the back. Nicely played to the right back. We've got Ryan, our box-to-box -box midfielder, who's going to run the ball forward there. And he's earned Harris a red card. So they are now down to 10 men, as well as 4-1 down. I'm going to bring Lacour on for Vrakas, our goal scorer. I want Ryan Williams on up front, the big man. He's 6'6", six six, so it'll be interesting to see how he works in this system. And I want Blackman on for all there, I think. There we go, some fresh legs. Let's see if that can make a difference. Now, how this system would work away from home, not too sure. Whether that high defensive line will cause us problems as, as, long as, the, as well as the attacking mentality, I am not sure. We'd have to test it for that. But all this is so you can get an idea of how you bring a concept to life within a system and then how you add the players to it and basically have a complete tactic to then use through the season. And of course, you're always going to have to mould it. I can't show you every single game and how a tactic evolves into being a finished product. To be honest, it's not very often I even get to the very, very, very end product of a tactic because I don't have very much time these days. That's very often why I end up downloading other systems. Really nice to see the systems working. 
even with that more direct style of passing, we're still able to hold possession. We've had 65% of the ball this game against Wrexham's 35. Warburton with the free kick to Williams at 6 foot 6. He should have done much better with that. Maybe one more chance here, is there? Williams working the ball forward, the advance forward. Passes to Lacourt. Warburton, the left back. To Samba, our winger. Get a cross in. Good ball and a nice header, but unfortunately, Howard gathers it in. That's 27 shots, 17 on target, one clear cut chance, six half chances. And if you have a look at the average positions here, that's how much possession we've had. Look at the heat map there. Loads of the ball, and the shape looks really good as well. We've got that black ball there, those two covering nicely at the back, and the three and the one. So we've not got players, what I'm saying is we've not got players just darting all over the place doing their own thing. It is a nice, solid shape. Good for one. I think that's a pretty good result and a decent start to the tactic. So, guys, that is essentially how you create a tactic in Football Manager 2020. I know I say it's conception to completion, but when I say completion, I mean the completion of your starting tactic. You're always going to have to evolve from there because you're going to find problems as you go along through the season. And it's about analysing the tactic as well. So from here, what you want to do is keep testing, testing, testing. Don't be afraid to make changes if you feel like something isn't working and analyse the hell out of your tactic. In my system, uh, just for argument's sake, that attacking mentality did see us overcommitted at times. So away from home, I may need to consider being a little bit more negative than that. So I might have to change on a game-to-game -game basis. Another example is the high line. We saw that caught us out once, but it was only once. And to be fair, it was because they weren't playing the offside trap like they were meant to. We'd have to give it a few games just to see whether there is an issue with that there. And it's all these little things that come together and you make little tiny tweaks. You may find, for instance, that, I don't know, your box-to-box -box midfielder is taking way too many shots and they're all going over the bar. Simply go in, shoot less often as an instruction. And eventually your tactic will start to take shape and will start working better over time. It takes a lot of time to build a really good tactic. We saw a game there and it worked really well, but it's not necessarily going to work that well during the next game. And it's going to vary massively with the other shapes and the other types of systems and opponents that you come up against with and come up against. So you're going to have to learn what makes it tick and what doesn't. My other prime example is like I was saying during the game, I may at some point have to drop the shadow striker back to DMC. I'll probably put him onto, I don't know, a support role. And then I may have to fiddle around with some of the other settings and work out where my attacking threat's going to come from, as well as the defensive stability. All that needs to be considered through the entire season. Okay, guys, this video has gone on for way too long. I can talk all day about this stuff, but I'm just wary that there's only so much people can take on board. Uh, if you've got any other questions um, or requests, just chuck them in the comments. If you enjoy the video, please give us a thumbs up. It would be much appreciated. It really does help the channel. And if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, subscribe, hit the bell button, and you will get alerts of new stuff as it goes live. The Scarborough Sea Dogs Can Fly series is still going, so make sure you watch that because I do that weekly, and you may pick up other tips along the way. Okay, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. See ya.